Hey there, how's it going everybody? Welcome back, Plant Abundance here. So the beginning part of this video is actually a re-upload from yesterday's video. I wanted to give this another go, add a bit more content to it, and also try to be a bit more precise in my explanation of things. But I was excited to share with you guys this order that I just received from Fungi Perfecti. What we've got here is five packages of mushroom spawn. This is their certified organic garden giant mushroom patch. And I've ordered this in the past and had great success. So no affiliation, but I do recommend that you go check out Fungi Perfecti. I'll put a link below this video if you want to go give that a closer look. But I'm going to be inoculating the garden this year once again with some of the spawn and growing some wonderful, edible, delicious mushrooms that have many other benefits to the garden that I'll talk about shortly. But first, let me open up one of these boxes and share with you what the mushroom spawn looks like. Now the order came very well packaged. It also came with some information to help guide you through the process. And here's what the spawn looks like. It's predominantly sawdust with some wood chips. And if you look closely, you can see the hyphae strands in there. This has all been inoculated with the mycelium and we're gonna now inoculate the garden with this. Besides being a delicious edible, wine cap mushrooms have some other qualities that I wanted to discuss that are really important to the environment. First off, it does a great job helping to break down organic materials such as the wood chips and turn it into humus to help build the soil. Mushroom mycelium can also be a form of myco-remediation, which is a way to restore and heal environments. The digestive enzymes produced by the mycelium have a unique ability to be able to break down a wide assortment of pollutants. We're talking about things like pesticides, PCBs, dioxins, diesel. Another unique ability of mushrooms is how they can hyperaccumulate heavy metals, which can help to heal and restore even the most damaged landscapes. So if you find yourself with toxic soil conditions or wanting to do a rehab project, I'd highly encourage you to look into mushrooms like the Garden Giant to expedite your success. So one of the best times to inoculate outdoor with mushroom spawn is in the fall, so in October into early November. And that's the main reason I wanted to make this video today. I want to remind you and just share with you some of the amazing things that this mushroom can do. So if you've been thinking about growing edible mushrooms or you've got a garden and you want to expand on that a bit, I say go for it. The Garden Giant in particular has a very broad temperature range. It can produce fruiting bodies anywhere between 40 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So on the cool side, on the hot side, this makes it easy for them to outcompete other fungi that may be in the landscape and they're extremely easy to identify. I'll include a playlist to some of the videos I've made in the past to guide you through some of that. Now I want to share with you how I went about inoculating the garden today. I did it a bit different than I did last year, which worked great. This year, however, we're having a slightly different weather pattern. It's remained hot and dry here into late October. And because my chickens are always roaming around, I wanna to try to protect my patches from too much damage. And I think I've come up with a solution for that, so stay tuned. So the substrate I'll be using is the same as last year, just the way I'm inoculating is a little bit different. So I've got my green garden waste container here filled with water and soaking in the water, I have both straw and some larger pieces of cardboard. Now in the case of the cardboard, what I'm looking to accomplish is to soften it up so that I can split it apart and gain access to the corrugations in the middle. This is beneficial for the mycelium as it likes to jump out onto those corrugations, helping it to run throughout the substrate. In the case of the straw, I'm practicing a technique known as cold incubation developed by none other than Paul Stamets. The idea with this is that by soaking the straw for about an hour in cold water, what we're doing is reducing the amount of any microscopic competitors that may be there. Now this is best practice for cold loving mushrooms such as the King Strafaria, and this is helpful in that it allows the mycelium to inoculate the substrate with the least amount of resistance. Another common technique for preparing straw for inoculation would be pasteurization. But the King Strafaria is tolerant of many different conditions and this is just a simplified version hoping to expedite the process. The instructions for cold incubation suggest that you should allow your soaked straw to fully drain so that it's still moist but not soggy. You'll notice as I continue forward putting together my substrate packages here that I'm putting soggy straw in there. I'm experimenting with this a bit as what I'm trying to accomplish is to create these moist little packages that I can put in my dry landscape that I'm not doing much watering in hopes to retain more moisture throughout the substrate allowing that mycelium a good opportunity to spread before the natural rains start to come in. Then I've also got my wood chips here and I'm also going to wet these down and saturate them in water. That way my substrate will stay nice and moist. So the new thing I'm doing this year is to use this natural burlap. Now I picked up a roll of this over at one of the big box stores. This is 3 by 10 feet and it was about $11. And what I'm doing is cutting these into about one and a half by 3 foot rectangles and layering up my substrate in the burlap. 
So first I put down my corrugated cardboard that's already been soaked. Then I'm going to add in some of the soaked straw. Now for the mushroom spawn. I'm going to put a nice generous amount in here. Clumps are okay. Then I'm going to add in a scoop of the wet wood chips. Now I just take the corners and tie it up. Take the opposite ends and do the same thing. And that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do from here, and I'll show you this example on one of my hugel cultures, is to scrape back the top layer of mulch. Then I put down a piece of corrugated cardboard and throw on my mycelium package there. Then I add a little bit more of the mushroom spawn. It looks something like this. Then I continue to layer up my ingredients, first with some of the soaked straw. Then I follow that up with some of the soaked wood chips. And I'm also adding a bit of dry wood chips on top that are just from the pathways. And then I just follow it up by watering the area and that's it. So one last thing I'm gonna do is put down a little bit of chicken wire. I do believe these packages are gonna make it harder for the chickens to really destroy the patch, but the chicken wire there is just an extra layer of protection. Another technique I'm employing this year is to simply scrape back the mulch and then I take some of that burlap and lay that down first. So the burlap, just as with the corrugated cardboard, acts as a nice grippy area for that mycelium to jump onto and start running throughout the substrate. So after the cardboard comes some more of the soaked straw. Then a nice layer of mushroom spawn. Followed once again by the soaked wood chips. And with this patch, I decided to layer it up a second time, making a nice sandwich of substrate. I think this is gonna to help to retain that moisture and get the ball rolling quicker. And the last step, just as with the mycelium sacks, I'm gonna just protect this from my roaming chickens. And I'll give it a nice soaking as well. So all in all, I inoculated something like 20 new patches out in the garden today. I'm really excited to see the results. I'll be sharing those with you in a future video. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. New videos uploaded every week, and I'm always doing updates on all the different projects going on around here. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. I'd encourage you to check the links below this video in the description box. I've included some additional resources pertaining to today's topic, so go check that out, and I'll see you soon. Take care.